We're going to start transitioning into more geometry. And as you know, maybe you know, if you don't know, now you'll know. I love geometry. So um, one of the, my goals in this whole class was to build up a firm foundation in graph theory so that you can understand the algebraic aspects of graph theory so we can prove some of my favorite geometric facts about graph theory. And we do it via the algebra. And it turns out that one of the key tools we're going to need is to solve systems of equations that come from graph Laplacians. In a particular kind of graph Laplacian, I'm going to introduce it today, we're going to call it a sub-Laplacian system, and it comes up actually pretty naturally also from electrical circuits. So we solved Laplacian systems, we kind of reinvented uh, Laplacian systems by thinking about electrical circuits and Ohm's law. We're going to do it again, this time we're going to just add a battery and suddenly we'll have this slightly different system which we'll call the sub-Laplacians. And, um, and once we have that, we're going to use these eventually. Stay tuned for some uh, wonderful, wonderful new results in geometry. But for now, sub-Laplacians. Here's the whole picture. <laughs> this is all we're doing today. We're taking a little Laplacian and we're going to break it up into blocks. And we're going to solve some part of this system. I'll show you how this happens. So it starts here. Remember, we had this Laplacian system where we took uh, a known current and we solved for a potential. Okay, and from that potential, we were able to do things like computing effective resistances, which is uh, quite important in its own right. Um, but um, maybe I'll also remind us that this is the net current, the net current. So it's not a current on the edges, it's a net current at each vertex, and this is a potential, it's not a potential difference or a voltage, it's the potential at each vertex. Now, here's a graph. If we pretend that this graph is a collection of, um, let's say, the edges are unit resistors, one thing you might do is put a little uh, battery in here. So let's hook up a battery. This is my drawing of a battery. I know that electrical engineers have important symbols that they like to use for batteries. Uh, I'm just going to draw a picture of one. All right, and now I connect it in to, to this graph. And what happens is now I've, what I've done is I've fixed a voltage. I've, I've picked a battery. Let's say it's a one volt battery. It's my one volt battery. And so I, between these two vertices, I've, I've fixed the voltage. I've fixed the potential difference. And now, I might want to now compute, say, what uh, maybe the rest of the voltages are. Or again, I could try to compute uh, effective resistances here. And uh, maybe the most natural question to ask is just like how much current do we have flowing through here? So to do this in terms of this linear system is a little bit different because we had our Laplacian, which I'm going to put here. But now we kind of know two of the potentials. We don't actually know what they are, but we know their difference. So uh, we might as well say there's a zero and a one. Let's put these two vertices, say, first in our list. There's a zero and one, and then the rest of the potentials we don't know. Let's put in a variable here. So this is a column vector um, for the rest of the vertices. And that's going to be equal to, well, there's going to be some net current. I don't know what it is at those two vertices, and then we expect, using Kirchhoff's current law, that all the other currents, net currents, and all the other vertices should be zero. All right, so I've broken these two vectors into blocks. I might as well break this into blocks as well. And so let's call the first one L0 and this L1, and then there's some other stuff, uh, just to give it a name, let's call it Q. It's a symmetric matrix, so this is Q transpose. So again, don't be mistaken, this entire matrix here was our Laplacian for this graph. Once I've broken my matrix out blockwise, one of the nice things about matrix multiplication and breaking matrices up into blocks is that you can just pretend that the blocks, um, you just treat the blocks individually. So what does that look like? It's uh, something like saying that uh, this question mark would be L0 times this 0, 1 vector plus Q transpose P. 
Um, but we don't care actually what that current is. We'll figure it out later. Let's find it, figure out what P is. So P, uh, well, it's going to be, we have Q times this 0, 1 plus L1 P is equal to 0. And so we can wrangle this into a single linear system as follows. It's just solving. Um, going to solve. L1 P is equal to negative Q times this uh, 0, 1. All right. And it, this is now the system we're solving. It's like the equations are just defined by this sub matrix of the Laplacian. The rest of the Laplacian is used to figure out what the right hand side of the equation is, um, but this is the system. And if we're going to solve it generally, what we would want is an inverse to L1. So we would set as our final answer here, we would say that, you know, the potential is negative L1 inverse Q times 0, 1. Now, it's not too important here what 0, 1 was. Actually, if we had fixed the voltage some, or fixed the potential some other way, we would still get a solution here, if, as long as we can actually invert L1. So that's going to be the important thing. The kind of system we get that comes from just taking a subset of the Laplacian like this, that's what we're going to call a sub-Laplacian system. And it turns out that they are quite nice. But let's look at it just a little bit more closely. So here's a graph. And I picked out a subgraph here. And if we were to break this up, blockwise as we did. So let's say that these, these were our first two vertices. And so we separated those out from the rest. And I guess I'm missing an edge in this Laplacian. I think there's one here. Okay. All right. The, the gaps are just zeros. Um, this down here is our L1, our sub Laplacian system. This is one of the simplest examples I could think of. Now, what is this as a matrix? It looks almost like a Laplacian in its own right. If I take the rest of the graph, that is the graph minus those two vertices, uh, let's call that H and let's call the original graph G, the Laplacian of H, well, it's just one edge. This is an easy one, right? This is one, one, minus one, minus one. And so the difference between our sub-Laplacian system and LH is just uh, some diagonal matrix here, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. I've added 1 to the diagonal of, of LH to get L1. Right? In other words, this L1 is LH plus X. It turns out that this will always be the structure of a sub-Laplacian system. And maybe it's not too hard to see why. Clearly, the negative ones off the diagonal still correspond to edges. And the diagonals are the degrees in G, which must be greater than or equal to the degrees in H, because H is just the induced subgraph on this subset of vertices that I kept. And so the difference between the degree in G and the degree in H is some positive number, or it could be zero, I guess, for some. And that's what shows up on this diagonal X. So here's what I've written is true. L1 is the Laplacian of this induced subgraph plus some non-negative, that is, there's no negative numbers in X. It's not zero, and it's diagonal. And this, um, again, the diagonal here, it sort of counts the uh, incident edges, right? For every diagonal, it's the edges incident to that vertex. Um, that are in uh, EG, but not in EH. So the edges we lost. It turns out that X really helps. X is the key to solving these systems. If in general, I wanted to invert a Laplacian, like the full on Laplacian, just take the whole thing and invert it, uh, we know that uh, it doesn't exist. So the Laplacian is always singular. And we know we can maybe compute some kind of pseudo inverse. Um, but I'm not going to just find an inverse more generally. It turns out 
L1, we actually can invert, and it's really because it's got this extra stuff on a diagonal. That's really what solves our problem here. So it, uh, I should be a little bit more careful. The key is that G has to be connected. So if the original graph is connected, and L1 is any sub Laplacian, so if I just picked out, if I removed any set of vertices to get to L1, uh, as long as I didn't remove all of them, then this matrix is invertible. All right, it's non-singular. And the key we're, fact we're going to use, the trick, is to show that, in fact, this matrix is positive definite. And if you don't remember, a positive definite matrix is one where you take a non-zero vector and you treat that matrix like a quadratic form, that is, you take x transpose mx, that this will always be positive. For these symmetric matrices, um, the... Uh, saying that the matrix is positive definite is also equivalent to saying that all the eigenvalues are positive, strictly positive. Um, and so if you have this, then you have an invertible matrix. And uh, let me just maybe use this decomposition we had, right? So L1 was the sum of some LH plus X. So you can just uh, factor this out. And what we get here is that for a graph Laplacian, this term is going to be greater than or equal to zero, but it's zero only if um, x is constant on each comp component. So if it's constant on each component, since the original graph G was connected, there's some edge from every one of those components to uh, the original graph G, that is there's some extra uh, or a non-zero value on the diagonal, and this, because it's diagonal, it's just the sum of the squares of the x's times those, uh, times those excess degrees. And so if there's any um, non-zeros in x that correspond to vertices that are uh, connected to the outside of H, then this thing is going to be strictly positive, right? So, um, so in this case, if this term is zero, it would imply that x transpose big X is strictly positive, and so the whole thing is definitely positive, right? You can't get this thing to be zero, and so, um, and that's it. So once you know that the the sub Laplacian is positive definite, you know it's invertible, and so for connected graphs, you take a sub Laplacian, you can always solve it. If you want to get like a current out of this, you know that in this case the current's got to be uh, plus c minus c, because right? remember this right hand side has to be orthogonal to the all ones, or in other words, the sum of all the entries here has to be zero. And so if you solve uh, by setting p equal to this, oh, I missed my inverse here. <laughs> I did all that work to show you that it was invertible and I forgot to write the inverse, but you put the inverse there and now uh, what you could do is solve the rest as well. You see, you know that L0 times 0, 1 plus Q transpose P, which you've now computed. We now know what P is. Well, that's going to be our current. It's going to give us our plus C minus C right there. So you can compute the current out of this. All right, so that's what a uh, sub Laplacian system is and why you can always invert it and why you can solve these sub Laplacian systems and I'll just give you one kind of teaser here which is that there are two big uses of sub Laplacian systems that are not uh, really <laughs> don't have anything to do with electrical engineering uh, although this first one was also proven by Kirchhoff it's often called Kirchhoff's theorem but it's also called the matrix tree theorem and we may not get to cover this in one of these videos. I hope we will, but we may not. So let me just tell you what the big punchline is. If I take a Laplacian and I just remove one row and one column, that sub Laplacian system, if I take its determinant, it tells me exactly how many spanning trees the original graph had. Which is pretty incredible to get this combinatorial result by this just purely algebraic means. The other thing we're going to use it for, which is so much fun, is Tut's algorithm. And this is an algorithm 
that will give us beautiful drawings of graphs in the plane. And uh, it's, it goes back to the 1960s when Tutmate wrote the paper. He just called the, titled the paper, How to Draw a Graph. Like this was the last word on drawing graphs. And it turned out to not be the last word on drawing graphs, but uh, man, is it a nice algorithm. So we'll get to uh, this one soon.